Welcome to Section 7 of the Backend Web Development Using Go video course, part of the Web Programming with Go series. In this section, we will implement an asynchronous task queue, and we will show you an example of how we can use it. In this video, we will implement an asynchronous task queue. In this video, we will show you how to declare a task interface. We will show you how to implement an asynchronous task queue. And we will show you how to start the queue's task dispatcher. Long running tasks slow down HTTP transactions. This can cause a problem when our website receives a heavy amount of traffic. In our upload image example, from Section 4, the user must wait for the image resize operation to complete before the HTTP transaction is finished. If we had thousands of website users attempting to upload an image at the same time, this can be problematic, and the user may notice the slowness. Asynchronous task queues allow us to perform CPU-intensive tasks in the background. This prevents long-running HTTP transactions. Go's concurrency constructs make it easy for us to implement an asynchronous task queue. Let's open up the task.go source file in the gopherface queue slash common slash async queue directory. This source file declares the interface for an asynchronous task that will be serviced by our asynchronous task queue. Notice that in order to implement the task interface, the perform function must be implemented. The perform function is where the work for the task is carried out. Let's open up the asyncq.go source file in the gopherface queue slash common slash async queue directory. We start out by declaring the exported task queue variable of type task channel. We will submit tasks using this exported task queue variable. At the bottom of the source file, we initialize the task queue as a buffered channel of size 108. By making this a buffered channel, we ensure that the channel won't block until it gets filled up. And here, we've defined the task worker queue. The task worker queue is a buffered channel of task channels. We've declared a task worker type, which consists of the following fields. An ID to identify the task worker, a task channel, from which the worker will get the task to perform, and a task worker queue. Right below that, we've declared this constructor function to create a new task worker. The function takes in the ID and a task worker queue as input arguments. The function returns a new task worker object. Here, we've implemented the start method for the task worker object. Each task worker will perform its task in its own Go routine. This for loop is an infinite loop, ensuring that the task runner will always be running after it's been started. The task work queue receives the incoming task channel. Inside our select block here, we await for an incoming task that we receive through the task channel. Once we receive the task object from the task channel, we call the perform method. By calling the perform method, we perform the unit of work that the task was meant to do. Here, we've defined our start task dispatcher function. The start task dispatcher function is responsible for accepting tasks from the task queue and dispatching them to the next available task worker. The function takes in an integer argument 
called task worker size, which specifies the maximum number of task workers to start. Next, we create a buffered channel of task channels of the size specified from the task worker size variable and assign it to the task worker queue variable. We have this for loop here to create task workers. The number of task workers that are created is based on the value of the task worker size variable. Inside this for loop, we print a log message indicating that we are creating a new task worker. We then use the new task worker constructor function to create a new task worker. Right after that, we call the start method on the task worker object so that the task worker will wait for incoming task requests. We spin up this Go routine to listen for new task requests from our web application. We will use the task queue channel to receive new tasks to perform. We then receive a task channel from the task worker queue, which tells us which task channel to use to send the task on. And finally, we send the task over this task channel. Let's open up the gopherface.go source file in the gopherface queue directory. Right after we've declared our main function, we start up the task dispatcher by calling the start task dispatcher function in the async queue package. After recompiling our code and starting up our web server, notice that in the terminal window, we have started up all nine of our asynchronous task workers. Now, our asynchronous task queue is ready to receive tasks to perform from our web application. In this video, we showed you how to declare a task interface. We then showed you how to implement an asynchronous task queue using Go. Finally, we showed you the result of starting up the asynchronous queues task dispatcher. In the next video, we will create a task to resize uploaded images and use the asynchronous task queue to perform the task in an asynchronous manner.